In this video I'm going to show you how I added an alternate power supply to a 3M Airstream respirator helmet. Before I go into the history of how I arrived at this particular configuration, let me just show you a couple of views. So let's just turn on the pack and it powers the helmet very nicely. As you can see this is a one piece unit. There are no hoses or external wires. The air comes in at the base of the helmet through a nuisance filter, through the blower, and then through a HEPA filter that's housed in the top of the helmet. The positive pressure pushes the air out under the face shield and away from the face so this way dust doesn't get in under the face shield. This is particularly useful for those of us that have beards where normal respirators don't seal very well against our faces. And now we'll get into a little history of uh, the other respirators I use and how I got to this particular configuration. My first respirator was a Trend Air Shield Pro which is a one-piece unit similar to the 3M Airstream unit but one of the things about the one-piece units is that they really only filter particulate matter. They don't do anything for organic compounds. The Breathe Easy unit uses a, a helmet with a hose that goes to a belt pack. The belt pack can have different cartridges on it. These are uh, particulate dust cartridges, but they also make larger cartridges for organic compounds. These types of respirators, more often than not used with a butyl mask, are used by first responders when they walk into hazardous conditions. So this blower pack mounts on a belt strap and this battery also clips to the belt pack. It's a nice setup but it weighs a bit. Sometimes we would hang the blower motor from the rafters and just use a longer hose going to the helmet in sort of a tethered arrangement. When I came across a buy on the Airstream helmet which is a one-piece unit the unit came without a battery, so I was looking for a battery for it. This is the NICAD battery pack for the Airstream or for the Breathe Easy. It's 4.8 volts, 5.7 amp hours, and it has a uh, three-prong connector, but it turns out there are really only two prongs are live. One is ground, and uh, the other two, the hot ones, are actually wired together. Here's the charger for it, and it's a little bulky, not a big deal if you're just in the shop, but it is a bit of a big deal if you're trying to uh, take the unit with you someplace to a class or, or to a demonstration. The Breathe Easy actually allows you to use different kinds of battery. The nickel cadmium battery used to be the default battery for it, and it's since been replaced by a nickel metal hydride battery. Nickel metal hydride used a different charger. You can't use the same charger on both batteries. If I wanted to get a nickel metal hydride battery, it means I would have to get another charger. The Breathe Easy can actually work with three different power supplies. The 4.8 volt NICAD battery, a nickel metal hydride battery, which is now the default for it, or a non-rechargeable lithium battery, typically kept in the kits of first responders so that when they pull out their kits, there's a fresh battery because the lithium batteries have a very, very long shelf life and are not affected by temperature. The Airstream unit, on the other hand, only works with the NICAD battery. The batteries list for about $250, but you can find some new old stock batteries on eBay from time to time, anywhere between, say, $50 and $100. But you don't know how old the batteries are, and old NICAD batteries may not be the best thing to buy. So now let's compare the size and weight of the NICAD battery pack that 3M sells and its charger with the Tekion lithium-ion battery and its little charger. The NICAD pack weighs in at 1 pound 11 and a half ounces. The Tekion weighs in at 4 and a half ounces, which compares pretty favorably to the 27 and a half ounces of the 3M battery. The charger weighs 1 pound 9 ounces, and the new charger weighs in at 2 ounces. And, of course, the charger and the battery together weigh about 6.5 ounces. Really great if you're traveling. And here's a really cool thing about it. The 3M battery, when attached to the Airstream, lasts about 8 hours. But an exhausted 3M battery takes from 16 to 24 hours to recharge. This Tekion battery lasts 9 hours, an hour longer than the 3M battery, 
And if this little battery pack is exhausted, it takes only five hours to charge from the plug-in charger or 10 hours to charge when plugged into a USB port on your computer. So a battery that weighs nearly two pounds, runs for eight hours, and takes an overnight recharge compared to a four ounce battery that runs nine hours and takes five hours to recharge, this was worth looking into. The battery is a Techion brand MP1860A. The pack is a rechargeable lithium battery. It has two USB outputs and a USB in. The USB in is used for charging and also can be used for data if you want to power your, uh, your iPhones or any other USB device. And the combined output of the ports is 2.5 amps. So you can use this battery pack to charge an iPad, which typically runs off of a 2.1 amp charger. So here's what you get with the MP1860A. You get the battery pack itself. You get a retractable power cord that has a 1.3 millimeter plug on one end and a USB plug on the other. You get two adapters. One is a mini USB and one is a micro USB. The mini USB is used with this plug to charge the unit when the other end is plugged into the charger unit. Uh, the micro USB is used for a lot of different devices, cell phones and such. It comes complete with the charger, an iPod cable, and a velour pouch. When I purchased this in 2011, the total price on Amazon was about $56. Considering that the charger alone is comparable to the iPad charger, which costs almost $30, and these cables are anywhere between $5 and $15 a piece, this is really quite a spectacular buy. The switch on the battery pack has three positions, off, on, and on with a little flashlight. This LED in the back glows blue when it's fully charged. It's supposed to turn amber when you've got less than 20% charge in it, but I found that when using it with the Airstream, it goes from blue to exhausted without going through the amber stage. This has something to do with the amount of current that's being drawn. It's not your typical electronic USB device. I've mounted a couple of squares of Velcro onto the underside of the battery pack, and I'll use that to attach it to the helmet. When I first started testing this battery with the 3M helmets, I wanted to create an adapter that would let me just plug in the power cord from the helmet directly into this battery pack. So I made a little adapter that mimics the plug on the 3M battery. And all I did was took a couple of pieces of brass tubing, glued them into a piece of Corian, and wired the leads together. As mentioned earlier, there are only two leads that need to be wired together. Although there are three prongs on this cable, there are actually only two wires in the cable. Although it's not the neatest adapter in the world, it was a good proof of concept showing that I could use a 1.3 millimeter female plug here and plug into the 1.3 millimeter male portion of the power cable. In order to keep the cable as short as possible, I decided to cut the cable close to the helmet and put in a couple of uh, just snap connectors. Again, there's only two wires in here. And this allows me to attach a small adapter into the helmet and then power the adapter through the 1.3 millimeter plug or get rid of this adapter entirely, plug in the rest of the stock cable use the original configuration into the original battery or use the little adapter. This gives me a lot of flexibility. But in actual use, I really only plug in this here and attach it to the helmet. Then the power cable gets plugged into the socket and into the battery pack and we can turn on the battery pack. I put a couple of pieces of Velcro on the helmet to meet up with the Velcro on the battery pack. And this allows me to balance it rather nicely on the top of the helmet. I also tried putting a couple of pieces on the back and you can just play with it to see what you're most comfortable with. But I kind of like this configuration on the top and just little pieces of Velcro keep everything from sliding around. So there you have it a 5 volt USB 2.5 amp battery pack that replaces the much larger 3M battery pack 
we can use this for things other than just the, the helmet here. I actually have a couple of them at $50 or so a piece. It's uh, they're pretty cost effective. And I take this with me when I'm traveling to uh, recharge the iPad or the iPhone. This will do a full recharge on an iPhone 4 and it will recharge about half of the capacity on an iPad. This 5 volt battery seems to be a pretty good substitution for the 4.8 volt NICAD. It charges faster, it weighs a fraction of the NICAD pack, it comes with a charger which only weighs a few ounces. If you don't want to mount it on the helmet you can certainly put it in your shirt pocket or mount it on your belt or in your pants pocket. Making up this little connector is pretty easy. A 1.3 millimeter female connector soldered onto a couple of pieces of wire and then soldered into a quick release. One thing to make sure of is whenever you have a power coming from a cord, you always want the power feed to be in the female or socket end of a plug. And you want the power receiver to be on the male end of the plug, much like a wall socket. The wall socket itself is female so that you can't accidentally short it out. The male plug here, the power consumer, plugs into the female power provider. So I hope this configuration gives some people some ideas that they can adapt to their own equipment. I'm really very pleased with this little battery pack. Its 5 volt USB output drives the motor on the 3M Airstream and the 3M Breathe Easy very nicely. So I'm very happy with the way it behaves in the shop and on the road.